Hello guys and welcome back in this requested video. I know I have many requests to do but unfortunately I was really really busy so I could not make any videos lately so uh, I hope you guys forgive me about this but um, sometimes I get really busy and uh, I really you know get get really busy away from the channel and I really you know apologize about that but uh, today I'm currently free and I will try to make the videos all of them in one day and upload them with separate time timeline on a separate timeline okay so let's start with this one uh, the first request or the oldest request that I did not make which is the what is it the smallest I remember the smallest possible inline straight four engine with maximum power output and then put it into a smart car chassis and see how it goes to track from this cool guy his name is uh, what the hell, Paul? Paulus Zapuliski? Yes, that's his name, I think. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And he wants, unfortunately, I don't have a smart car body, but I have something similar to it, and I will see if it can work out or not. Right. I've chosen, I'm gonna show you the body later, but let me make the chassis first. first. Let's start with aluminium, because it's lightweight, monocoque, glued aluminium. And transverse. Let's see which one is the lightest. The lightest is the person. And let's see which which one is light and compact at the same time. Now the push rod is light, but so the most compact one is the push rod, really. As you can see, the push rod. Sometimes I really get lost, so the minus is not compact, the coil is compact, what the hell, the torsion beam, yes the torsion beam I think is the most compact one, its compactness is a plus 3, that's good, but the weight, actually the weight is good actually, so Mac Macpherson in strut in front and torsion beam in the back. Right, plus two quality because I want to sell the car. That's the body that I choose. It's small. Look how small it is. It's nearly, I think, as a, like it nearly as a smart car. So why the hell the wheels look like that? Come on. Would make a difference if I made them. No, it will not make any difference. So should be. <sighs> so the body is weird, but at least I have. I think I have to make it like this so I can cover the wheels, cover the tires. All right, acceptable like this. Alright, now we have covered it good, good now. Alright, so it's covered I think, and let's see now, let's play with the body and make it, you know, stand out a little bit. Alright. Perfect. See a good color for it will be all right. This one is good. Tires, chromies. Yeah, chromies. Why not? All right. So let's start with the headlights. <clears throat> the headlights should be, you know, simple. Not much aggressive. Now this is a because this is a car with a I'm gonna make this this car with, with the smallest in, in line four engine as possible. Right. The headlights. Look. 
Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Um, which one of these grills do you think it will be good for it? This one. Let's see if I switch it like this. No. No, no, keep it this way. Alright, fog lights now. Everyone needs fog lights. Fog lights. Alright. Perfect. And let's see the badge. I'm getting bored from, from this badge. But I think I'm, I need to use it since I chose it. Alright, now the indicators on the side because this is a city car and I will attempt to set up maybe. Now, these, this shape here, which one of these do you think it would be perfect? Let's see if I can fit that. No, it looks weird. I don't like it. Hmm. Somehow it looks good. But now, <clears throat> we have to choose something different. Damn these, uh, these, what do you call them? These angles here. made it and it's in the correct shape I think the indicators and oh, we can switch them around but let me first all right so these should be the reverse light reverse lights yeah no this should be the indicators Ah, yes, this is the breaking light. This is also the breaking light. No, this is also a, an indicator. Uh, this is a reverse light. These are reverse lights. Down these brakes, and this one is an indicator. And let me make this one. No, not red. Black. Yeah, black is good actually. It looks great. Alright, so it's looking great so far. The exhaust tip. Single one of course. And the license plate should be here. Smaller. Tick OK. Door handles. Okay, let's make them funky. Right, tilt it this way, make him make him a little bit weird. And an antenna. Let's put a shark tail. Uh, 
perfect and then let's see what which all right fuel filler cap perfect anything else do you think do you think I missed it yes the badge in the back perfect right you would buy this car it looks great it's compact it's small and well, it's sporty of course did we forget anything door handles everything uh, everything else. check check all right so the engine now it will be in line four let's say aluminium I want it to be as small as possible Dual overhead comes out, five valves, aluminium. Since this engine is a small one, let's see. I, I'm not gonna go with billet steel because it will rev to the moon this one. So, lightweight forged, forged is the answer. It's two. I forgot, is this engine... Yes, he wants it to be also... Oh, this is another comment from him. You know, he wants it turbocharged with the most reasonable power as that engine can get in. It will be great if that engine would be not, not only powerful but economic as well. Alright, so he wants the smallest one with a... You know, with a reasonable engine power. So 9.5 to 1 then, and I don't know, let's say... Alright, this is a point I want to make now. I'm gonna use VVL because last night I received a comment about making the cam profile small and the VVL profile big. And that is the official way, my friends. That is the official way of making VVL because you know manufacturers will never put a big camshaft with a small VVL because VVL will only activate at high RPM. You cannot expect an engine to start with you know because if you put a big camshaft, it will start very low on power at low RPM. And if you use a big camshaft with small VVL, the engine will start small and it will die small. It will go at max RPM without any power it will die it will be a lazy dog so you have to do the opposite use a small camshaft with big VVL profile so when you hit high RPM the VVL curves will activate in the on the camshaft and open the valves more so more air will go in and more air will exit also from the engine and that will make more power that's the correct VVL way he told me because last night I received the comment that this will make the engine efficiency less and uh, hello that's how VVL works VVL is a device an extra device controlled by sensors on the camshaft and that also required maintenance I mean you cannot expect to put VVL on camshaft and it will rev you expect it to live forever it will need service at some point that's why the engine efficiency will, de will decrease when, when you are not using VVL the engine efficiency will, will rise because it's just a camshaft and just a camshaft position sensors only but now you have more sensors um, more stuff to dial in in the ECU that's why it's, it will decrease the engine efficiency and reliability sometimes and that's is up that's the price to pay when you want performance so let's see let me put it on 25 and 60 maybe I will show you why VVT or variable valve timing which controlled in the what call them here the uh, the camshaft gear in front is the inside it is the what well, it it's controlled by a me me mechanic something I, I saw it uh, on the engineering explain channel and I've totally forgot about how how it works the difference between VVL and VVT but you can check it out it's very it's very awesome on a YouTube channel it's called engine Ex engineering Ex explained they will he's a cool guy he explains everything about engines so turbocharged ball bearing and let's say medium let's see economy or performance alright performance then 
as you can see the compressor size is the smallest if I used economy or performance they, uh, they are using the smallest one but race they're making it big so let, let, I'm gonna use it economy first and tune it later injection direct injection throttle per cylinder performance 95 octane and let's see 13.5 or 13.7 decrease the timing see if I can hit 12,000 maybe maybe if not I will decrease it leave it like this high flow straight through straight through and plus two so this engine now is making 40 horsepower and as you can see it can rev up to 15,800 but they only allows uh, the game only allows to 12,000 so no and I'm gonna decrease it a little bit because as you can see I'm losing power let's tune the turbocharger Let's see. 10 BSI. As you can see, decreasing the decreasing the AR ratio will give me more fuel efficiency. But who the hell cares? All right. So increasing the turbine size will give me more fuel efficiency, as you can see. Eleven PSI, twelve PSI. All right, so twelve PSI is good. The compressor is healthy now. Compressor is running healthy, no issues in it. Actually, it's when it's red, it's not an issue. It means it's, it's restricting air. But because sometimes I, I all I always leave the engine with red compressor info here. But it's okay, uh, the compressor will not explode. It's just, you know, restricting air from the engine. But now it's not res restricting anything. Turbine is restricting a little bit. It's okay because more air yeah, ratio. I know it will give me more power, but I'm gonna lose, you know, the efficient power band. So 18, 18, 15, 815 is good. Uh, what else should we do here? Yes, the ignition timing. Ignition timing will give you more fuel efficiency. On 100 then. Alright, let's see the exhaust system. Alright, so one and a half inch. I know that's small, but who cares? I'm I'm decreasing the RPM because the power only goes up to 7,700, and then the turbo will give up. It will not go any further. So 8,000 is good because more than 8,000, you are just losing power, and losing power is not really a funny thing to do. I mean, if I want, I can increase the cam, the VVL profile. Uh, that would give would give me, you know, more uh, more power up to uh, up the high RPMs, as you can see. As if I put a nine thousand here, I think I have to make the VVL profile even higher, as you can see. So the engine is better off, I think. No, it's the same thing. Yeah. So ball bearing again. Right, so small. So 10 PSI then. 61 horsepower. Perfect. I don't want to go for full kaboom, you know, make the of making the turbine small as hell. No, I like to make the turbine and the 
and the what we call the compressor size, you know, similar to each other, so the turbo will look consistent and have a consistent shape when you when you finish. All right, so we have two. Let's see the BVL profile then. All right, so 60 horsepower then, I think. And here you can choose the. Who the hell said that uh, the fuel efficiency? Efficient, where is where is the engine efficiency? I'm gonna. I want to kill that guy who said that last night. Here's the reliability, and here's the fuel efficiency, right? All right. If I increase the cam profile, so I can make them similar, as he said. Look, I'm losing fuel efficiency. But if I decrease it, make the camshaft small, as you can see, up to 14. Yes, 14. I will have 21.3 fuel efficiency and look at the smoothness, my friend. 89. My God, I just sometimes, sometimes people make me ang makes me angry. So 85 will give me 60 horsepower, as you can see, and 14. It means the camshaft itself is very small, but the VVL is very big. The VVL leap or the VVL profile that's on the the camshaft, it's big. It's nearly a racing one. Now let's hear this bad boy and see it also. Look at it, small and tiny. Look how small it is. It's nearly as the size of it is nearly as the the dyno what the hell they call it in the science world the dyno dynometer or di dynometer or what the hell they call it yes I like it I look at the exhaust how small it is it's very efficient I like it yeah my brother had a cough sounds good actually it sounds really good look at the turbo size per perfectly balanced with the engine size and the air filter the intercooler the, the that performance <laughs> a carbon fiber intake manifold I really like it it's looking awesome and let's see the figures before we leave look at the service cost nothing the engineering time is 108 yeah I know it's a little bit high but uh, it's awesome I deserve it uh, I mean, for a production engine, yes, it's high, but it's okay. Uh, production units, good. The weight, no weight at all, 50 kilograms. Any bodybuilder will lift it with his, with, with one arm only. Uh, the fuel economy, nah, it's perfect for 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 you know, for its profile. This is a performance engine. It's not a stupid economy engine. And uh, the smoothness, it's smooth as a butter butter. And let's see, the throttle response is also good. 9000 rpm you can rev it no problem it will never hit it hurt itself because as it, as i showed you before it the internals can rev up to 15300 or 15800 so when you rev it up to 9000 it's just under under stress it's not over stressed it's under or, not, or what the hell they call it they call it over overworked or underworked you know what you know what I mean it's uh, it's working really 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 easily relaxed at 9000 rpm it's okay and if I want to make it cheaper I could use cast iron if I think if I want look because the cast crankshaft can go up to 14,000 cast connecting rods 12,000 cast pistons 12,000 and even I can use this one the the low friction one. I can look. I got more fuel efficiency by using a low friction cast, and they can rev up to 11,700. And I only rev the engine up to uh, what do you call it, 9,000 RPM. I know we have lost a little bit of smoothness of using, you know, cast uh, pistons and cast connecting rods. And the reliability, I forgot if we gained. I, uh, now the engine is a little bit heavier because you know cast. Turners are heavier than 
Bendy Forged one, but they are cheaper. And look, look at the production units, cheaper. Yeah, at 708. Is it cheaper really? Let me check. So 707 is the normal cost, 708. So, no, the, yes, so the forged one, the forged, forging is cheaper, or the forged parts, parts are cheaper than cast parts. Hmm. Because I don't want to put, you know, internals that can rev up to million horsepower, million RPM, and the engine will only go up to 9000. This is more efficient. That's what that's what I said. Uh, why using uh, highly high I don't know, uh, expensive, more high uh, engineering parts inside the engine, and the en and the engine only revs, revs up to nine thousand RPM, and the regular crappy ones they rev up to eleven thousand seven hundred. So why using the expensive ones? Eh, it's correct this way. Right. So the engine is in. Let's use manual and. 6 speed I think and the car can go up to 157 kilometers well, good for a city car all right so in the spacing I will check it later open of course plus one only hard long life now the wheels or the tires 145 in front let's be make the wheel arches bigger. One twenty. One thirty-five. Okay, I'm gonna see which one is better. Let's see, steel or alloy. So alloy is lighter. Or magnesium? No, magnesium is lighter. Yes, alloy. Alloy is heavier. Look at the difference. Steel six kilograms, magnesium three point point forty, alloy four point seventy six, and now the carbon fiber one point seventy one kilograms per wheel. That's nothing. One kilogram. It's like holding a potato bag. Actually, the potatoes are more heavier. Wow, carbon fiber, my friends. Two pistons, 250, maybe three pistons because it's a small rotor and a solid one in the back, one piston. I'm, I'm gonna check the base later, plus one and here, for the clad, cooling flaps for better economy, brake airflow to the max, 65, plus one again. Four seater or two seater? Yeah, uh, four seater is standard, standard. Electric variable because it's lighter. Traction control ABS or maybe electronic stability control. It's advanced. Hmm. Which one of these should I use? I need to use it a cheap one or a regular one. No, no need for expensive one. Adaptive, maybe active, I will see. So this car is a commuter. Commuter means uh, a car that uses for long distance driving. Commuter budget or commuter. Hmm. Wow, look at the MPG, 57.1. Ho ho ho, this car is a Prius, my friend. This car is a Prius killer. 57.1 and uh, no, I think the Prius can manage more than that, but I'm really impressed Wow, I'm really really genuinely I'm really impressed So you go quicker or the final drive the more 60 mpg this way 
So stick it on 50, as you can see, if I put it on 50, I will gain 60, I will, I will keep the 60 MPG. But if I increase the, as you can see, no, I'm gonna keep it on 50. So the comp commuter budget. Making the front wheel smaller actually will increase the drivability of the car. Alright, so 120 in front and 135 in the back. Hmm. Steel, do you think? Steel and let's see, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, so 16 then. <laughs> 16 then, and the 580, the tire diameter, and let's see. The brakes, of course, they are not, uh, they are not fading. Why should they? Why should the brakes fade? Because the car is freaking light. 800 kilograms! That's why, my friend, that's why. Now, the brake balance. Well, since the car is very lightweight, so sixty-one thirty-nine as as the standard one. Hmm, impressive, impressive indeed. So zero quality here, and let's see, <coughs> semi-clad or fully clad? Fully clad, of course, is better. No, if I if I if I remove the if I remove the cooling flaps, I will gain more selling point. But if I use them, I will gain more fuel economy. So screw them. I want more fuel economy. Oh yes, this way I will gain more reliability. Sixty then and plus two. So if I want to sell it to the... What the hell? I, I hate that. Let me just turn off the Riva tuner, yes. I want to see, so 42% can buy it, which is really low. I don't like it. So I'm gonna use... If I want to, if I want to sell it to the budget people, I would use basic. If I want to sell it to the commuter people... So the commuter people, they want, they want premium. City Eco. Hmm. A compact, practical car for inner city use with a focus on fuel economy. Alright, so City Eco, they want, so they want premium. Premium inter internal inter interior, 87.2, right. They want it also light. They want it also a with a good quality. Hmm, impressive. And they don't care about. They want basic infotainment, as you can see. Because if I put standard, I will gain 87.4. I use basic, I will gain 89.3 for city ecos. And look here, 90.6 for the budget. But 50, 57% wants to buy it, or 57% can afford it. So let's focus on city eco or commuter. City eco is good actually. So traction control. Oh, electronic stability control, no need to launch control, this engine is so freaking small, 
we don't need launch control. All right, Sam. Then so plus seven here. They want they want the the aids to be you know they want them to be more high. They want it to be more high quality. Advanced or no? They want they want they like it advanced then. Also okay. Now let's see here. City Eco. Which one do they prefer? They want active sway bars. And they want semi-active standard. No, progressive. No, they want progressive. So this is the perfect one for them. All right, so let me tune it well for them. They want it normal, but I'm, I will tune it myself. So that's perfect for them then. No need to change anything. It's 100. The drivability was 100, 100 percent. So I will not touch anything here. They want it. They want it like that. I will give it. I will give it to them like that. I know the wheels or the tires width is tiny, but that's the perfect way to do it for this car. Look, the drivability is 100. 100 percent. So uh, a child, a, an old man, an old woman, anyone can get in this car and drive it off. Of course, if they want if they want to drive it, you know, manually. So this is the car guys, uh, 160 kilometers per hour is the top speed, the weight is very light, 768 kilograms, uh, it has good reliability, look at the MPG, and that's, that's the point of this car, 63.5 MPG, it's just sipping fuel, sipping fuel so lightly, the emissions, so low! This car is friendly. This car is an eco-friendly car. And look at the engine. Small and tiny and turbocharged. Uh, it's safe. You can say that. Uh, it's somehow comfortable. It has some sporty pedigree to it. It's drivable. It's very drivable. It's practical, of course, because it has a what we call a tilty door in the back. And what the hell happened to the to the lights here? All right, they are fixed. Perfect. So as you can see, the, I like this car. It, it's actually it turned out well. I, it, it's not. This is not a fast car. It's an economy car with a turbocharger that runs on 10 psi. And yes, I know 95 octane is a high octane and it, it's an expensive fuel. But look, you are saving it. And there are, the engine can rev up to 9,000 RPM. Can you can you tell me an economy car can go up to 63 and a half mpg that can rev up to 9,000 RPM? I don't I don't think there is. So let's try this beast now. What do you think, Top, top Gear test track or automation test track? Let's try them both. <laughs>
So, as you can see here, it did it in under 3 minutes, 2 minutes 56.56, wow, that's efficient. And uh, as you can see, I know the car is not really fast, 160 kilometers is, you know, really, really... So, basically this car can go, let's see, 60 miles, 120 kilometers, so this car maybe can hit 7, 80 miles maybe, 80 miles, that's the top speed of it. Uh, it's it's a good city car. This is not you know a a drag racing car or a track car, but it managed well actually. And uh, as you heard, the engine sounds amazing, and it can hit 9,000 RPM. And so it's fun. It's fun to drive. Let's try the top top gear test track or the airfield one, as they call it. Alright then, so the car did it in 147.67. Um, it's slow, I know, if uh, Jeremy Clarkson were here, it would, it would maybe make this car explode or something, or maybe he will hit it with a hammer. But uh, this is not, you know, racing this car is not really the point of it. I, I know it's fun to drive, but no, this is not a racing car, this is an economy car, so I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it. I need to give it something, you know. Nine. I'm gonna go to D9. Yeah, nine, why not? Call it nine turbo. The nine is, of course, for 9000 RPM, and the turbo, you know why. And the engine, I'm gonna call it nine. Nine. What's, what's the CC on this engine? 300, nearly 400 CC, so I'm gonna call it 393 CC Turbo 60 horsepower Actually not 60 horsepower, because 60 horsepower is, uh, is, you know, is shown, it's shown in the Page. I'm gonna call it 60, 63 mpg. All right. And here I'm gonna call it cast dual overhead cam turbo DFI, which is direct fuel injection. And yes, of course, 95 octane. So this is the car, guys. Let's see how much it will cost. It will cost the company to sell it without any profit. Uh, Eleven thousand six hundred dollars, and with ten percent profit, twelve thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. It's freaking cheap. Can you imagine going to a dealer to buy a brand new car, a brand new one, 
really a brand new one with a 63.5 mpg 9000 rpm turbocharged inline 4 engine with direct for direct fuel injection and carbon carbon fiber intake manifold and front wheel drive manual 6 speed with premium interior and a basic i don't know basic you know infer infotainment or a basic stereo and uh, advanced safety and it has electronic stability control system you know traction control abs etc and it has uh, a, a super comfy in, uh, suspension system uh, high quality or good quality parts everything here is plus one except the brakes so the, everything the chassis the engine everything is plus two except the these parts here some of them is plus one plus two this one is as you can see the zero so it's good uh, except the look at this the traction aids plus seven the quality of the interior is premium plus two and the car is super lightweight look at the weight of it look at how much how much this thing weighed the total weight where is it am i blind or something what is it uh, yes 768 kilograms that's freaking lightweight wow it's very very awesome and i'm gonna all right, so I hope you really enjoyed this video, guys. This car has been really, really nice to make. And uh, again, this cool guy, his name is Polis. How Polis? Polis? Zapoliski. Thank you so much for this for request. I really enjoyed making it, and I hope you enjoy. I hope you really all, all of you enjoy, guys uh, enjoy seeing this video. And I hope you really can, if you have this game on your PC, you, you can try and make a replica of it on your PC and enjoy. You know, seeing and rehearing that engine revved up to 9,000 RPM with this high MPG as well. I hope really guys enjoy it. If you enjoy it, remember to smash that like button, smash it really hard. And uh, of course, if you are not a subscriber, I would be really happy to see you as a, a, subs as a, as a subscriber on my channel. And let's see, as yeah, a Facebook account, alright. And also, hit that notification bell button so you can get a notification on your mobile phone when I release a new video like today and again I apologize if I take too long making this video and I apologize also again for uh, for you know these two days delays with the requests I'm gonna start making them all today if I can I hope I, I will not get, get busy so thank you so much for guys for watching I will see you in another video later and bye bye